Hi you guys, it's Duana here, and I'm here to share another sew along, but this time for my pattern ME2030. I mean, this is cute. This is a snap down to zip. When I came up with this design, I was like, you know what? I'm tired of the regular button ups. Like, I just wanna do something different. So that's when I came up with, you know, what if I curve the snap or the buttons on one side and then do a zipper to get out. I think that's so unique. I've never seen it before. So this is the style, this is the design. I love it. I think that you can wear this so many different places and I love that there's two views. So if you are more into dresses, there's view A and if you're more into rompers, there's view B. I personally love the romper option. Who doesn't love a good romper? So enough talk, let's get to this sew along. So here is my sew along for my pattern ME2030. Stay tuned. So let's take a look at my Nomi pattern ME2030. We have view A, which is the dress, and we have view B, which is the romper. All right, so let's take a look at the back. When choosing my size, I like to look at the finished garment measurements, and that's how I determine which one would fit me the best. Also with this pattern, also know that view A has a contrast belt and view B does not. All right, so now let's go ahead and take a look at the pattern pieces. Okay, so this is pattern piece number one. This is the right bodice front, and you're gonna cut one of these. Pattern piece number two, this is the left bodice front, and you're gonna cut one of these. Pattern piece number three, this is the right front band, and you're gonna cut two of fabric and one of interfacing. Pattern piece number four, the left front band, and you're gonna cut two of fabric and one of interfacing. This is pattern piece number five, this is the bodice back, and you're gonna cut two of these. This is pattern piece number six. This is the collar band. You're gonna cut two of fabric and one of interfacing. All right, this is pattern piece number seven. This is the collar. You're gonna cut two of fabric and one of interfacing. This is pattern piece number nine. This is the pocket, and you're gonna cut two of these. This is pattern piece number 11. This is the carrier, and you're gonna cut one of these. All right, let's take a look at this one. This is pattern piece number 12. This is the belt, and for the contrast, you're gonna cut two. For the fabric, you're gonna cut two, and for the interfacing, one. All right, this is pattern piece number 13, the shorts front, and you're gonna cut two of these. All right, last but not least, this is pattern piece number 14. This is the shorts back, and you're gonna cut two of these. Let's look at our materials. We're gonna need some fabric. This is a cotton sateen. You're gonna need some interfacing. You're gonna need some single fold bias tape. You're gonna need a 14 inch invisible zipper. And you're gonna need some heavy duty snaps with a snap tool. Okay, so these are all the pieces that you need to get interfaced. Make sure you label the front bands because they look so identical. Grab your pattern piece number one and you're gonna stay stitch the neck edge of the right bodice front and then you're gonna stitch the dart. Okay, so now let's take this to the sewing machine. Whenever you're stitching a dart, you always wanna start at the raw edge. And once you get closer to the end, about an inch away from the point, you're gonna curve in and then stitch at the very edge of that. Don't back stitch, and what you're gonna do is you're gonna pull out some thread and then tie a knot. All right, and so my dart looks good, and now I'm going to go ahead and stay stitch the right bodice front. Make sure you press your darts down, and then we are going to go ahead to the next step. Grab the interfaced right front band, 
and then with right sides together and raw edges even, you're gonna pin those two pieces together matching the notches. Now go ahead and stitch it together. Press the band out, pressing the seam towards the band. Go ahead and grab your other right front band, and this is the uninterfaced one, and you're gonna press under half an inch on the notched edge. Go ahead and pin those together, matching notches. Now let's go to the sewing machine and stitch these together. So now we're going to understitch our facing with our seam facing the facing. Now we're just going to stitch all the way down. And if you've ever understitched, you know that sometimes the seam would go onto the other side, so you always want to check, and so that's what I'm doing. All right, so I'm gonna turn my facing to the inside and I am going to pin it and then press it to make sure it's nice and flat. And now I'm going to take this to my sewing machine and stitch in the ditch. After pressing it flat, I just repositioned my needles so that they are in a place where I can see them. And now I'm going to stitch in the ditch. And another note before you do that, you wanna make sure that you're stitching on top of that little piece of fabric right there. Grab your left bodice front and then you're gonna stay stitched the neck edge and you're gonna go ahead and pin the darts. Now stitch the dart from raw edge to the point. Now we're gonna make the pleats and to make the pleats in the left bodice front, on the outside, you're gonna fold along the solid lines and then you're gonna bring the folds to the broken lines. Make sure you pin it so it stays in place and then you're gonna baste across the raw edge. Now you're gonna go ahead and grab the left front band and matching notches, you're gonna attach it to the left front bodice. Notice that the left and right front band also look very similar, so it is a good idea to label it just to make sure that you don't mix them up because there is subtle differences to both of them. So once you're done pinning it, go ahead and stitch it together. When you press it, make sure the seam is facing towards the band. Go ahead and grab the other left front band facing and press under half an inch. And you're going to go ahead and pin those together and then stitch. So let's take this to the sewing machine. So like the right front band, we are also going to under stitch. Remember when understitching, you want to make sure that you are stitching on top of your seam allowance. And so now, once this is done, you're going to do like you did with the right front band. You're going to stitch in the ditch of the seam, catching in the pressed edge of the facing on the inside. And this is what it should look like. So here is what both of them would look like. And now you can actually put this aside and we're gonna take a look at the bodice back. All right, so with the bodice back, you want to make sure that you have your darts marked. I didn't do that, so now I'm doing that. So go ahead and place the bodice back, right sides facing, and you're gonna pin that together. And then you're gonna pin the darts together. 
And once you're done pinning, you can go ahead and stitch all those together. Remember with the dart, you're always going from the raw edge to the point. All right, so you wanna make sure you also stay stitched the neck edge of the bodice back, and then you wanna make sure that your darts are facing towards the center. So we are gonna bring back our front bodice pieces and we are going to pin those to the back. All right, so go ahead and stitch those together. And with the right side, you only need to stitch up until the large dot. I know I don't mention this enough, but make sure you're also pressing down your seams. You're pressing your seams open, you're pressing the fabric, just to make sure everything is laying nice and flat. All right, so go ahead and grab your single fold bias tape. And with right sides together, you're gonna pin the tape to the armhole edge with the raw edges even. So you're gonna go ahead and pin that. And once I get around the end, I just like to make sure that I have a little extra sticking out. And it takes a while, but it is so worth it when you see the final products. So go ahead and stitch it all the way. Make sure you're stitching very carefully. So go ahead and turn the tape to the inside and press. I also like to use my Wonder Clips just to make sure that it is laying nice and flat. So once you're done clipping that together, you're gonna go ahead and baste close to the inner edge of the tape. And then the outside, you're gonna top stitch as basted. All right, so let's go ahead and take this to the sewing machine. Okay, so let's take a look. Because this is on the outside, you wanna make sure that your lines are as straight as possible. Grab the collar band and with right sides together, you're gonna to pin the single notched edge of the collar band to the neck edge. You wanna make sure that all your notches are matching here because you don't want your collar to look lopsided. Now go ahead and I want you to baste it together first and I'll tell you why in a second. So once you are done basting it, I want you to go and try it on. This is just to make sure that it fits your bust perfectly because everyone's bust is different. You wanna make sure that there's no gaping on the sides. But a trick that I learned to help with the gaping on the sides is just to rise that one side by the armhole you just lift it up a little bit, move it up a little bit, and then you're gonna stitch it right where the notches are. So you're just raising it about an inch and a half and that helps with the gaping. Now you may not need to, but for me, I did have to do that in order to prevent the gaping. And then I just trimmed off that excess fabric. Grab your two collar pieces, one that is interfaced and one that is not, and with right sides together, you're gonna to stitch those together, leaving the notched edges open. I trimmed the corners so that it's not bulky on the tips. And now I'm gonna turn it right sides out and then I'm going to make sure that I stick out this part as much as possible because you want your collar to be nice and pointy. And once I have turned it over, I'm going to go ahead and understitch my collar. You're probably not gonna be able to start from one complete end to another complete end. You can start as far out as possible and then go as far as you can. Take your collar and you wanna make sure that the understitched side is facing downwards and you're gonna go ahead and pin this to your collar band matching the notches. All right, go ahead and stitch it together. Take the neck band facing, and then you're gonna make sure that you press under 5 eighths of an inch. And then with right sides together, you're gonna pin the neck band facing to the neck band 
over the collar, matching the centers. And then you're going to make sure when you stitch it, you're stitching the front and double notched edge. When you're done stitching, it is a good idea to trim any corners just to make sure that your collar band is looking nice and neat and not bulky. And so now you can go ahead and turn it right sides out. Make sure you give this a good press when you're all done. But when you turn it over, you want to also pin the collar band down together. And when you're done pinning, you can just do a top stitch on both sides of the collar band. So our collar is nice and done, and we're gonna put this aside for now. And we're gonna go ahead and work on the pockets. So I actually took this part to my ironing board and I pressed under the upper raw edge of the pocket. Then I turned the upper edge to the outside along the fold line, forming a facing. And then I stitched along the seam line on the raw edges. So now I'm turning the corners right side out, turning the facing to the wrong side, and then I'm going to press. And you also want to press under the raw edges along the stitching. All right, and I'm going to stitch the facing close to the inner edge. So I'm going to do the shorts version. And so on the outside, I'm going to pin the pocket to the shorts front along the placement line. So if you don't have the placement lines, it's a good idea to make it because you want your pocket placement to be as accurate as possible. So once I've placed the pocket onto the shorts, I'm going to go ahead and take this to my sewing machine. So I'm going to stitch close to the side and the lower edges and leave the top open. To make the pleats in the short front, on outside you're going to fold along the solid lines, bring folds to the broken lines and pin and then baste across the raw edge. Grab the shorts back and then you're going to go ahead and pin your darts. Make sure when you're stitching your darts you're stitching from the raw edge to the point. And then you want to make sure that you're pressing your darts towards the center. And now with right sides together, you're going to pin the center seam matching the inner leg seams and notches. Go ahead and stitch that together and you want to make sure that you are pressing your seams open. Alright, so go ahead and take your shorts front and you're going to also stitch those together at the center seam. Grab the shorts front and then you're going to stitch the shorts front to the shorts back at the left side seam. So grab your carrier and I already pressed mine with my iron lengthwise with wrong sides together and then at the center as well and now I'm going to stitch it. Okay so now you're going to take the carrier which is basically a belt loop and on the center back you're going to lap the lower end of the carrier over the seam line. Now take your shorts and the bodice and you're going to go ahead and pin it together at the waist edge matching the centers, the seams and the notches. After I stitched those together, I also surged it just so it looks a little cleaner, but you also want to make sure that you press the seam towards the bodice. And now I'm going to take my inner leg seams and I'm going to pin those together and then stitch. Now go ahead and grab your zipper and we're going to go ahead and add our zipper. This is a 14 inch invisible zipper and I did not need to trim it. Um, you could always get a longer one, you may need to trim it. Before using an invisible zipper, I like to press the tape open using a cool iron. It just makes it a lot easier when I'm stitching. And on the outside, I'm going to pin the right side of the zipper face down on the left bodice side edge. And you're going to do the same with the other side. But let's take this to the sewing machine so you can see how to stitch this onto the fabric. You're going to need an invisible zipper foot and depending on the sewing machine that you use, it should come with it or there's a specific one for it. This is the one for my machine. So I'm gonna add it and then I'm going to go ahead and stitch 
my zipper onto the fabric. I stitched both sides together and they are matched up beautifully. And with that extra tape at the top, I'm just gonna trim it off. But you can always follow the instructions on slip stitching or folding it over into the fabric. As long as you don't cut off the top stop, you are fine. We are almost done, look at that so cool and so unique all right so now back to the carrier aka the belt loop all right so you're going to press up the carrier to the large dot on the back bodice and then you're just going to stitch close to the pressed edge and here i didn't press the edge but i'm going to do that and you will see what it looks like at the end and just to make sure it is accurate, I'm just gonna go ahead and make my dot. I'm pretty sure I did, but then it probably disappeared somewhere. So I'm gonna just do it again. And this is where my pressed edge would be. And then I'm going to stitch on top there. And this is what it should look like. Looks nice and sturdy in there. And this is where the belt goes through. Speaking of belt, we're now going to go ahead and stitch the belt pieces together. When stitching it together, make sure you leave a little opening so that way you can turn it right sides out. Right, I'm going to go ahead and trim my seams. And one thing I want to add about the belt is you want to make sure that it is going to fit your waist. So this belt size is actually a size lower than the size I chose to make the garment. And that works fine. You just want to make sure that you are getting the right size belt for your garment. So once you're done turning it right sides out, you will have your opening and you can go ahead and slip stitch that together and then top stitch around the entire belt. And I'm gonna pass it through the carrier and I'm basically almost done. So this is just to see what it looks like. It's almost done and all that is really left is adding our snaps. So when making the holes for the snaps, I actually like to use an awl. Depending on the snap toolkit you get, you will probably get a something to make the holes, but I really like the awl. I think it works better than those tools. And once you've made the holes, you're gonna go ahead and grab your snap pieces and you have the side that fits the top of the snap perfectly. That's the side you're gonna start with. And this is going on the top. And then we have another piece that goes um, and attaches to the top and we have another two pieces and those go at the bottom so I'm gonna go ahead and start attaching the top pieces so I add that and then I add the complementary side to that and I'm gonna use my snap tool to snap it in there I didn't realize doing snaps were so easy and now I love doing snaps. Finish off the rest of the snaps and then you're gonna go ahead and do the snaps for the belt as well. I like to do all my top parts at once because I don't like switching my pieces but once you are done the top, you can take out that black part and then the purple part is now for the bottom pieces. And I don't know if these things have names, so I apologize that I'm just calling them by their color. So again, I use the awl to make any holes, and then I go ahead and add the pieces. And I just went ahead and snapped my belt together, and now it's time to do the inside. And what I like to do before I actually use the marks 
that I originally had, I like to double check my marks just to make sure that everything lines up perfectly. And so all my marks are made for the inside part of the garment and I made the snaps. Look at that, looks so cool. I also went ahead and hemmed the bottom of the shorts and that's it. Your garment is complete. Thanks for watching my so long for my Nomi pattern ME2030.